First of all, it would be actually the title would be better, Life uh, Traveling Lighter Without Paul. That would be the better, be a better topic. Because really, you're not going to travel lighter with Paul or with Steve or with Mary. That's the whole desire and drive is we want to travel lighter with ourselves instead of from ourselves. Yeah, we want to get ourselves better or you know, get to a point where it's okay. But you see, let's say if you do a retreat three weeks or two weeks and you're out, you're not getting calls from the outside, your bills aren't coming in, you know, you're getting massaged every day, you have vegan gourmet food, yes, eagle claw bathtubs in each private room, meditate three times or whatever you see the teacher five times a day you're getting tantric massages everything great and then the last sunday you get to a point where everything is fine it's all lined up i feel fucking great i'm emotionally stable i feel peace and this and that and it's beautiful but then 901 shows up and then 902 shows up and conditions change yeah because you're attempting to have your okayness is based on other conditions, your emotional, mental, physical, circumstantial, financial states. And there's no way you're ever going to get them lined up and have them stabilized because things come and go here. It's a very, very volatile situation. So, and we always are living under the dry current of time. So you can feel freaking great at 10 o'clock and at 10.05 you're in an earth-shattering event. Something is very suspicious about that, that something could change so dramatically. So the whole point is, it truly is, is traveling lighter without Paul. That's the, that's the one seeming qualification. Because most of us have been trying to travel lighter as Paul and as Bill for fucking years. And look, and here we are once again. <laughs> so really, this message to me, you ever see cigarette packs? Packs, they have that warning, this could be dangerous to your health and you, you're smoking like this. Well, this idea to me is like a warning this message. And the warning is, is that there is an activity, probably the quickest process of all processes here is the process of the mental state bringing about a sense of being a self. Yeah. I call it selfing. Yeah. It happens supposedly in 50th of a second. And therefore in time, which all the other things we're doing, let's say paths and practices and processes are of time, how are they going to beat that which is prior to them? So if the self thing's main drive is the claim, anything and everything it comes in contact with, when that feeling of being that non-existent thing, like Ramana Maharshi puts it beautifully, he says, there's a presupposing of a non-existent thing wanting to get salvation for the non-existent thing. Yeah, it's beautiful, really. The presupposing. Now, a supposing is like an assuming. Yeah? But it's beautiful that they use the word pre because the assumption, which happens after the fact, yeah? after the sense of being awake, consciously seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, that mental state is a process that, that shows up after the fact, but it presupposes that you are the non-existent thing before the fact. So now you have a feeling you're conscious. Not consciousness is all there is, but your conscious. You see? So the presupposing of a non-existent thing, wanting to get salvation for the non-existent thing. Now you can say wanting to get, if you were at a different meeting, wanting to get a bologna sandwich for the non-existent thing, or wanting to get a pair of pants for the non-existent thing. But basically, there is a non-existent thing that's being assumed to be that which is existing. That's the dilemma. Yeah, that which comes after is implied to be before. That's what it's doing. That's what selfing does. The selfing comes after, but it implies that there's someone before. That you're the one who's seeing, you're the one who's feeling, you're the one as this that's tasting and touching. So now consciousness, which is the constant evidence that we're all inherently awake, yeah, gets neutered 
by us thinking we're conscious. And now it becomes an attribute we can work on and we can have, and then we get it, and then we lose it. And it's all this mental state playing God over consciousness. Now, how are you going to get out of something that you could not possibly be in? It's impossible. You cannot transcend an imaginary place. So all the presupposing a non-existent thing doesn't, doesn't change the fact that it's non-existing. You don't, have, if you, you don't have to kill it or vanquish it. You don't have to go back to make sure it's dead. It doesn't exist. It's an activity. It's a mental activity. It cannot produce what it's implying is already there. It cannot produce it. All it can do is convince that which we are, which is reality, to lend this reality to this idea of being a non-existent thing. So it's through the act of being identified as a self, that's the bondage of self. The bondage of self is an activity, pure and simple. It could never fucking happen. It seems to happen. It seems like it's so, so real when we're believing it, and then it's seen through very easily when we're not believing it. So we're the reality, lending reality to things through being identified as a thing. And the mental state keeps reinforcing this identification by presupposing, by insinuating, by assuming, by implying that what comes after, which is the feeling of being Paul, is before everything. And therefore, the before, the before, which is being, or what do you call it, consciousness, or whatever it is, the before now becomes something that comes after you. You're the one who's conscious. You're the thinker. You're the feeler. You're the doer. You're the haver. You're the loser. This is all the same act being duplicated and repeated constantly by a mental state. There's doing, right? It arises after the doing, or it's actually a, an aspect of doing, and then it, says, it implies that you are the doer. That's the presupposing of the non-existent thing. Now the non-existent thing gets emphasized every time there's an action that occurs, because the action's being used by the mental state to imply the actor. That's the bondage of self. If you see it, you're not looking from it. If you're not looking from it, you can't be bonded as it. No freaking way. The freedom is inherently so. The freedom to bo of bondage is prior to bondage. It's prior. This has never happened. That's why it works. That's why this solution works, because it's a solution to an imaginary problem. As soon as that dawns, there's no need for a solution. That's the solution. And then that's that, really. Yes. <laughs> then you go to a store, you do this or do that. But now you travel later because you're not the Paul that's traveling. Because if it's the Paul that's traveling, it thinks it's really worthy and deserving of tons of fucking thinking about why I did what I did today. Yeah? And it's not enough just to deal with that. You, you start, the mental state will go back 30 years and think about shit you never even did. Assuming you were the doer of it. And then imagine, out of imaginary fields, tons of guilt and shame is being harvested all fucking day for something you had nothing to do with. This is what happens here. The mental state implies, listen to the language, listen to it, not hear, see. Is it? <laughs> It's, it's, you can see it, and if the seeing is occurring at all times, always available, right where you are, with no requirements necessary, then the seeing is so obviously so, because there's no effort or thought involved in it. You cannot do yourself into seeing, nor can you do yourself out of seeing. Yeah? We, I humbly believe, are all, all inherently awake, and then here you can seem to be awake to that fact, or you can be, seem to be asleep to that fact. It doesn't change the fact. It does not change the fact one iota if you're awake to it or not awake to it. It's awake. And awakeness is beautiful because it's not doing it, it's being it. Yeah? Look at conscious contact today. <laughs> Yesterday I woke up seemingly in San Francisco. 
Today I wake up in North Carolina. A whole lot of shit changed, but did that which seemed to wake up change? The same consciousness that was holding the space for San Francisco is the same consciousness that now is holding the space for North Carolina. The, the consciousness wasn't exhausted by taking the plane ride. <laughs> it was like it didn't have to go to a consciousness gym and work out to recall, you know, get its conscious abs better. It didn't have to do like that. It is demonstrating no thought or effort, is it? Do you go to seeing classes? Maybe you go to yoga classes, eating classes, therapy, psychological, psychiatry, everything. But seeing, you're not like seeing, you know? seeing, <laughs> hearing, feeling, tasting. No, it's always available with no thought or effort. You wake up in the morning and you're on. And you were on while you were, you were idling, so to speak, in sleep, but now you're on and you're active. And there's no thought or effort. Why would you believe that you can get back there through thought and effort? It doesn't demonstrate any thought or effort, ever. Just recognize what you're not, and that, and that will lead to the recognition you're the seeing of what you're not. That's what we are. We're the seeing. We're not the seer of what we're not. That would be another what you're not. It's the seeing of what you're not. And that which is seeing cannot be seen. That which is hearing cannot be heard. That which is feeling cannot be felt. That which is tasting cannot be tasted. You and I do not have the privilege of knowing what we are. We're so past that, that point where being what we are. There's a, I went to a, I used to give a talk at a bookstore. I don't think they want me back anymore. But I did this talk where I live. And uh, they sell tons of New Age books. And there was a book, a 900-page book on consciousness. Now, <clears throat> why would you want to study 900 pages about something you are? Wouldn't it be much wiser to be it? Yeah. I don't want to become a knower of consciousness. <laughs> I am conscious. <laughs> but why would I want to know what I am when it's afforded to us the possibility of being what we are? Why would I want to take what I am and make it a topic to what I'm not? Why not study what you're not, Yeah, and then you'll find out exactly what you are by realizing what you're not. Instead of trying to get to that, that place you've never left, yeah, you'll be able to go to the store in peace. You know, you order a latte and your big decision, should I have three shots or two? It <laughs> fucking doesn't mean that much. Yeah. You live life without Paul. See, life with Paul could have 12 volumes. Life without Paul doesn't even have an author page. <laughs> it's all blank. Do make it what you want. It could be a comedy. It doesn't matter. So this beautiful thing, and then Ramana finishes it up beautifully. So there's this pre, and this is just the essence of selfing. What is that space where the first presupposing of a non-existent thing occurs. Isn't that the space of being? Isn't that the big M mind? And then the mental activity that, let's say, the relative or conditional mind offers up this idea, hey, you're a fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah. Not that you're a non-existent thing, because that would have been the end of the story, but the non-existent thing implies that it's existing. Yeah. So there it is. You're right in that space, that context of mind, and this idea arises. And the idea is, hey, I'm a non-existent thing. And then the whole system, the thought system, the memories, the perceptions are all, all geared to reinforce, to reassume, to reimply that which you're not, that you're this body. Okay. So then he says, all right, if this is the case, then... When your spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing, how can they destroy it? If your spiritual practices themselves are being used to reinforce the non-existent thing, how can they destroy it?
Like St. Francis says, what's looking are you looking for? How the mental state interprets that, you and I are looking for what's looking. It's totally been objectified by the non-existent thing. And now you go on a large hunt to find out what's looking while all the time you are what's looking. So St. Francis wanted to save us a huge amount of time by just switching it. What's looking, not who's looking, what's looking is what you and I are looking for. What does that do to the you and I looking for with the what's looking preceding it? What does it do? It stops it in its tracks, doesn't it? Why would what's looking be looking for itself? It doesn't make any sense. It makes a lot of sense when it gets objectified into this mythical what's looking, like the all-seeing eye somewhere in the cave in Himalayas. Then you and I would be fucking maybe very noble in certain social circles to be looking for it. Yeah, we could spend a lot of years and buying carpets as we went and rugs and nice, you know, ethnic clothing and have our flutes on the walls. And then, yes, I'm still pursuing what's looking. It's like a fucking white tiger or something, you know, almost extinct. Yeah, it sounds great. You can write tons of blog posts and everything. Oh, I was, I almost saw it today. What's looking? <laughs> I got a little glimpse, like, like, what's his name? Bigfoot or something. I almost saw it. I swear. But St. Francis goes, what's looking is what you're looking for. Wait, wow. Whoa, wait a minute. Uh, I, but see, what happens is the mental state hears this and goes, well, I got that freaking in ticket to India. <laughs> I've signed up for that retreat. I'm not really sure I want to entertain this view. <laughs> it's so much more comfortable to be with the U's and I's that are looking for what's looking than to have it all stop. And I have all that money spent. And <laughs> what's looking is what you're looking for. So the beauty, see, this is the beauty of it. The mental... It's like a mental heist. That which comes after is implying that it's before. So every doing that's being done, the mental state is using it to imply the doer. Every feeling that ever seemed to have occurred, the mental state is using that feeling. It's not saying there's no feelings. The feelings seem to happen. But it's implying that there's a feeler. Yeah? So there's the thoughts, the feelings, the doings. Everything is being used in this one hidden purpose to point back to the non-existent thing. So its existence gets verified by all this real shit happening, but it is being attributed to an unreal figure, a phantom. Yeah. So in Zen, they would say the finger pointing at the moon. In this case, there's not even a moon. There's just pointing. So the mental state is pointing, presupposing, assuming, implying that you're a someone. Yeah? And then everything else that it claims, the feelings, the thoughts, the actions, it's using to reinforce that story. So it's really a beautiful statement, bondage of self, because there is no self. If there was, it would be bonded to self. It would be you were a thing, and then there's some other thing called self, and you're bonded to it, like a handcuff with, to a chair. But the bondage of is of self. Self is the mother and father of bondage. Like Paul, like in old history, they have languages where the, your name would be Paul, son of Steve, or uh, you know, son of Mary. So it's bondage of self. Without the sense of being a long-lasting, independent, separate entity, there's no bondage. There needs to have be a, a sense of self to be a bonded to, yes? So the bondage is of self. So not, the point is, is not to try to get out of the bondage. That's being, quote unquote, in self. See if you're in self. And if you're not in self, you're out of the bondage. That's, the, that's how it freaking works in a way. It's like a back door, yeah? You don't move towards that which you want move towards, you realize you're not that that's moving towards anything, and then you find yourself to be right where you are at all times with no requirement necessary. It's not exciting. It isn't, because you don't get higher belts as you go. It's just you're awake to being awake. <laughs> 
whoopee dee. It's not a huge event, really. It's much better if you weren't awake and you became awake. Fuck. I could call every one of my friends up. You know, I'm now awake. But you're awake to what? There's an old story Ramana uses. I'm going to paraphrase it, but it's pretty nice. Where a lady, she has a necklace and she loses it. So she goes to all her friends and says, can you please help me find the necklace? So they're going, they're looking, looking, they can't find it. And they, oh, and one guy says, I know a great finder of necklaces. We've got to travel far. Are you willing to go? I'll do anything to find that necklace. All right, so they buy it. Of course, he goes with her. <laughs> she pays for both tickets. <laughs> and they go and they, they truck around and stop at all his favorite haunts. And then they, oh, there's the cave where the finder of necklaces is. So they go in. Oh, great finder of necklace. Can you please help me find the necklace? It's on your neck. What? Oh, yeah, it's on your neck. And so there's a realization, but the thing is, it's always been on her neck. She never lost the thing, yeah? It's always been there. The guy points it out. But the funny thing, and then she goes, oh, I found my necklace. And then she goes and sees all her friends and say, tells her, I finally found my necklace. But it was never lost. So she did, did she actually find it? It had never been gone anywhere, yeah? But the funny thing is, when she thought it was lost, she was miserable. And now that she thinks she's found it, she's really happy. Now, this is the tricky one. But it was always there. Yeah. So was the misery really based on she lost her necklace? Because the necklace hadn't gone anywhere. The misery was based on her belief she lost the necklace. This is it. This is the whole point. Yeah. Something that's always there is hard to notice with these perceptual eyes. You're not going to see it, just like the fish probably has no idea it's in the ocean. And if the fish had self-centeredness, many of them may be complaining how dry they are. Yeah? They would. And it would be serious. And the other people who felt dry would be agreeing, and they'd have this big story about how dry they were when they were immersed in water all freaking day. It's like the idea of the wave in the ocean. The wave once, let's say the wave's not having a good time as a wave. Other people are breaking on shores of Hawaii. It's breaking off of New Jersey shores, and it's, it's very unhappy, and no one rides it, and no, you know, <laughs> nothing. It's just whatever. And so it's, so it's figured it hears about this thing called the ocean. It says, oh, I want to get an experience the ocean. I think it can make me feel a whole lot better as a wave. So now it studies, and it has a story. I would love to, to, to like, Unite with the ocean. I'd love to be absorbed by the ocean, but as a wave. <laughs> so now its whole relationship with the ocean is it can only experience it every once in a while, but more infrequently not. It can read books about it. It can read scriptures about it. But the fact is, it is the ocean. The only thing it needs to do is question the waveness. As soon as it questions the waveness, suddenly, how long does it take for the ocean to, dawn, ocean to dawn on itself? No time whatsoever. And when it dawns, was there any other time when it had not been the ocean? No. If this dawns on you, it shows you immediately, I hope it will, when it dawns on you that nothing, it has always been this way. It invalidates the whole story here. Not in a terrible, denying way. It's just not so. You know, so when what is so appears in an obvious way here, it really just negates every freaking thing else. It isn't like not so was real, not so is real, and then suddenly something happened, and now something else is real. What so? It isn't. What so arises, seemingly, it's never arisen, but it seems to arise, and it informs you that nothing that you thought ever had happened. <laughs> That's the good news. <laughs> you can take yourself light, lightly. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ, I was worrying about something that never fucking happened. It's like crazy. So this whole point is see, see what's occurring. To me, they're all warnings. Just like Huang Po, a great master, Zen master, said, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You can do it for eons, nothing's going to happen. You can't use the light to seek the light. You can't use big M mind to seek BM mind. If there's an activity of seeking, there must be a denial of the basic state. 
Why would the Buddha ever seek the Buddha? If, if, if You know what I mean? Why would the Buddha ever seek the Buddha? It would be the greatest way to forget that it's the Buddha by looking for himself. How long would it be for the Buddha to realize it's the Buddha? No time at all. And what effort and thought would it take? None whatsoever. When is it available? Now. Will the availability stay available? Yes. As long as you're here, it's available. Because you're the Buddha. <laughs> you don't see the beauty of... It's so incredible. Being is so different than doing and knowing, man. You would, you would, you don't need to learn anymore. <laughs> you really don't. You're not, more learning isn't going to bring you being. It isn't. There's no bringing forth of being. It's available. It's right, it's, it's us right now. As much as being isn't in, in a process of becoming more being. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the most being, or, or the lesser being. It's just being. Yeah, it's not culminating or reaching a crescendo. It's just always it. It's always available at all times, right where we're sitting. Yeah, like what's looking is what we're looking for. It doesn't say what's looking, and then eight pages are requirements for us to become what we're looking for. <laughs> it's what's looking is what you're looking for, like right now. So I, what I saw, and all the, what happened with me, well, this one thing happened. Something had changed, and there was a statement in recovery. I come from recovery. And there was a statement that I had read many, 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 many times, because I used to teach a course in this one area, this inventory process. And it was a simple thing. And it says, being convinced that self, and so convinced means to believe with certainty, being convinced that self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. So it was very clear it was calling self a something and then us as something other. Yeah, so here we are. So this is all of us. And then there's this thing, I say it's a non-thing, this idea that implies it's a thing yeah, of self that manifests in a lot of ways to defeat us. And if you're convinced of that, we will now look at some of its common manifestations in people's lives. And the first thing we look at is resentment and fear and stuff like that. So now, if you follow it, that fear and resentment are manifestations of self in our lives. They're not our manifestations, in a sense. Yes? So uh, something, some process is developing and producing effects through us. And that's the self in the thought system. Yeah? And yet, when you talk to people, a lot of people, they keep saying all the effects of self are theirs, went through the language. They, my resentments, my fears, my this, my that. But they're not being generated by what you are. They're being generated by what we are being identified as what we're not. Yeah? Through this bondage of self. Yes? So... As soon as that dawned on me, because it already had dawned, and when I read that, I saw self as like a foreign installment or a parasitical movement. But it doesn't matter how it's pictured, as long as it's pictured as other, because the mind works in mental in images more than words, yeah? So I saw it as other. And then as soon as I saw it clearly as other, the next possibility that was always possible but hadn't been to me showed up, which is I can be free from it. And that works. Yeah. So I saw what I wasn't. So in other words, I wasn't attempting to move towards a goal that it believed would release it. I was freed from that idea of being one that was bound. Yeah. So the one of the major effects was I lost all interest in the need to be liberated. Because what needs to be liberated is not you. <laughs> Seriously. You're like, it's a, it's just, you're just actually redoubling down on a small mistake. Yeah. 
So all these interests that I had, looking like I would call them a lot of spiritual, and were dismissed like in a second, yeah? My spiritual pants fell down, and I never pulled them back up. I've been walking around naked. I even came on the plane naked in North Carolina, and I'm naked right now. Yeah. So that's to me, and it's like Nizagadatta Mirage, a great uh, master, says, hey, the guy, lady was asking him about, well, you uh, are we all princes? He says, well, if you don't know if you're a prince or not, live as one and see what happens. Yeah? So let's see. Let's see if, if you start living as the source of that, of that which you've always been looking for. See what happens. Maybe you'll actually echo the validity of it. Yeah? Maybe there'll be an aha or an unspoken yes, and you'll know prior to all knowing. Yeah? You'll have a sense of what you are that will give you a leavening agent to all the shit about what you're not. So there's a scening, and then suddenly you realize, Jesus Christ, I've been looking at for myself as a thing when I'm not a thing. So all the mental landscape is, all, is verbs that imply nouns. And this wind blew through and blew all the nouns in my mental landscape, and I saw everything as verbing. Everything is just verbing. There's no thing. There's no nouns to be found, yeah? It's just verbing. It's sort of like if you went to the river and you put a glass of water in there and you went home and you put it on your mantle and said, this is the Colorado River, but it's just water. You lost the essence of the river, which is rivering. You can't capture that, yeah? You think you know the river, but that's not the river, yeah? You can't know being. You can only be being. So the point is, when you see, when you start, and this is the movement. If you want to, if you want anything to study, why don't you recognize the criminal? And the first movement it does is it claims everything it comes in contact with. How do you notice that? Well, all the words, all the thoughts seem to be preceded by my. All your feelings seem to be preceded by my. So there's a claiming of the feelings. There's a claiming of the thoughts, and the thoughts are the actions on the most leather thickest chain of all, that they're my actions. So it's using all these things yeah, to keep implying, reinforcing, reassuming that you're a non-existent thing. So it's moving the starting point. It's forgetting what comes before by placing itself there. And it now moves you back to the Alpha and the Omega. And now you may even look for what you are out on the game board. Yeah? But from a false reference point. All you need to do is see what you're not, and that's that. And it doesn't take a lot of time to see what you're not. You're seeing what you're not all day. So the my is the most influential, and then you can go on riff. We have a lot of time. We can riff on tons of things. Just the idea of time. Do you know what the sense or the influence of time all day? Watch everyone driving. All their experiences, behaviors are based on time. Us, we're being, we're constantly moving from a seeming moment that doesn't doesn't measure up to what we want to a fucking future moment. Will we? we Hope will replace this moment. It's all time. And we don't even know we're a huge player in it. We're dreaming time. If you're having a bad day, you know, you're at work, it seems to go slow. If you're surfing, it seems to go fast. Doesn't that give you a sense that, wait a minute, it seems like I have a lot to do with time. You know, it's usually based on my condition. <laughs> all the thoughts are totally drenched in time. The thought system... Oh, the thought system pictures you and I as a body. You can't be thought about as anything other than that. You're thought about as a body. When your thought system thinks about what happened to you four years ago, you're pictured as a body. That's what, the, that's what triggers mine. Mine immediately pictures you as a body. That's the bondage of self. And then when it's worrying about you in the future, it's worrying about you as a body. The whole thought system is constant. Its whole sent system is based on self. It's a, it's a self-centered system. So the center of the system, that which is always being thought about or thought from, is the sense of self. That's the act of the bondage of self. But it needs your compliance. 
What is that thing that's constantly talking in your head? Who is it talking to? Doesn't it spend a lot of time trying to convince something up there to do something? Doesn't it? I know for me as a recovered alcoholic, I mean, if I was a self, I would just be fucking loaded now. But something has to talk to me incessantly for five days to finally say, lead me to a point of fuck it. And I'm like, oh, fuck it. Then it says, hey, let's have a drink. <laughs> Who is that it was talking to? Or what was that it was talking to? Doesn't it sound like something's trying to convince something up there? What is that silent thing that's, that all the yapping's attempting to convince? <laughs> yes? And the point is, a thought happening in your head and held as yours can have a huge amount, amount of effect on you. That same thought seen as yours from here has no effect on me. But the same thought, if it was happening here and I was holding it as mine, it would have a huge amount of effect, or at least the ability effect. It's not the thoughts, obviously. It's not the feelings and it's not the actions. It's the my. It's that, it's that phantom act that we're not noticing, the act of selfing, that my, that, com that, it, that is placed prior to the action, prior to the feelings, prior to the thoughts, that's giving all the meaning to the actions, the feelings, and the thoughts. And a lot of those meanings are being used to bond mind to the idea that it's a body. It's not something that ever happened. It can seem to be happening all the time, but it never happened. It can never happen, but it can seem to happen. Seemingly is the most important word here. It means it appears to be true or false to you. You're the final arbiter. Not as you as this, but you as mind are the final arbiter here. We are the only reality there is. When something seems as real as real can be, it must be seeming as real as real could be to what is real. Where else would it ever get a sense of reality? Unless it was given to it by reality. That's what's happening here all day. We're dreaming. You ever read The Course of Miracles, people? There's a beautiful statement in The Course. It says, you and I are the dreaming of this dream. And we forget that we're dreaming. This is the important point. Now, how could dreaming forget its dreaming? It can only seem to forget its dreaming, and it needs time and space to do that. Yeah? In timelessness, this, this never happens. Only in time can it seem to happen. Right? So you and I are the dreaming of the dream. They say the dreamer, but I don't like nouns, so the dreaming. The dreaming of the dream. We forget that we're dreaming. How the hell are we forgetting that we're dreaming? By remembering we're the dreamt. If, I, if you can be perceived, you cannot be what's perceiving. So the dreamt. Yeah? So you and I are the dreaming of the dream. We forget that somehow, <laughs> seemingly. See, it can happen, but it can seem to happen. And in that state, we, now in this state, we give everything we dreamt, thoughts, feelings, everything, the power to affect us as the body. Sounds like everyone's day. Really? I mean, you could give this to every human, if there are any humans. And this will be the diagram of everyone's fucking day. We're the dreaming of this dream. We forget that we're dreaming. And we give everything we dreamt the power to affect us. That's the story. Yes? Now the point is, is how does the dreaming forget? It's through the identification as this non-existent thing. It forgets that it's the dreaming. And now it's suddenly everything it's dreaming has the ability to affect it as the non-existent thing. And then, not only that, it'll be gone over millions of fucking times in the mental state. It'll be given tons of meaning, ad nausea, and it'll just go on and on and on and on. And this poor freaking body will be seen as the center of the universe. And it's like taking all this lovely North Carolina dispersed sunlight and then focusing on one body, you would incinerate it. We have <laughs> the mental state's like a magnifying glass getting in front of the sun of all suns and turning all that focus on you as the center of the universe. You, that which is always thought about. <laughs> you, that which. <was laughs>
You know, that's why everyone's going so fucking neurotic and they got to get high. You're trying to escape from being the center of the universe. It's too much. This is just a Toyota. It's not supposed to be the head car at the Indy 500. It's just a utilitarian truck. Gets me to North Carolina. It's not fucking like a like a float in the Rose Parade, you know? It's not just, it's not, it's not worthy of millions of thoughts all fucking day. It really isn't. I was a house painter. I needed maybe 14 a day to do my job, you know? I was always coming in, there'd be four walls, some trim, a ceiling. There wasn't much to think about. What were these 800,000 thoughts doing? They were reinforcing the idea that you're the thinker, that you're the painter, that you're the data, that you're the this. That's all it is. It's an activity. It can never complete the mission. That's why it keeps on going. Because it can only make something seem to be real to what is real. It cannot bring anything into reality. We're already there as reality. And we're not a thing. So for me, this, like, I just did a, you know, ever hear Kirtan music? hymnal music. I've been running into Kirtan people. So I was in Toronto and they opened up for me the last two times. And it's beautiful. And if you're available and present, which we all are, you can really get a vote, you know, move like in half a second. I was, you know, swinging and so, you know, picturing the beloved. It's great. And then I get up to speak and I said, well, here's the bad news. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be a ba bringer of bad tidings. I do enjoy it in a weird way. And just like this. <laughs> because really, this isn't, you know, there is a very distinct difference between being and doing and having. Yeah? There's a huge distinction between being and experience. This isn't an experience. Yeah? It's not an experience not based on phenomena, it's the inherent context, it's the inherent state prior to all states. It's something other than an experience or a phenomenal event. It's being, it's, it's like contextual, yeah? You can't separate yourself from it to experience it. You can't get any distance from it to know it. You can, you're just totally sentenced to be it. And now you can seemingly act like you're not, but that can only be held in time and it doesn't last long. Every night you go to sleep, it's all fucking forgotten. Yeah. And that which is has never been ruffled by anything that's ever happened. There's no tattoo that you've ever done has been left on that space. It's like a big sky. It allows everything to appear in it, yet nothing that anything that appears in it has no effect on it. That's what mind is like. Big, open, contextual. So when you have an expansion in mind, it's not mind expanding, it's an expansion in mind. And it's almost like a sonar thing. It, the, the pings go out and it never hits anything. It just keeps going. It never hits, you never get a ping. When you throw that rock in this well, you never hear a sound. That's our nature. Always available at all times. We don't have to try to configure this nature to get in line with it. It's using it quite well right now. Yeah? So here's the sky. Planes are flying through it all day. I've never heard one report that a plane called the tower and said I ran into a big chunk of sky. <laughs> yeah? Clouds. I never, seen the, I never seen the sky turn into a cloud when 100 clouds appeared in it. It hit critical mass and turned into a cloud. No? Clouds come and go. Sky's always there. 365 days of July 4th, uh, you know, like celebrations, never rip the sky open. Birds take a shit. It doesn't land on the sky. It lands on your car, stuff like that. <laughs> yes. When it rains, the earth gets wet. It doesn't. That's what mind is like, you know, as a mimicking, as, a, as an illustration. There's nothing that's ever happened here that's left a mark in it, ever. You know? So here, you know, these talks really aren't pointed to you. I hate to break the news to you. It's because this happened in L.A. a lot. People would come to the guy who was watching the door and tell him, this, everything this guy says goes over my head. So he asked me after the meeting, I said, that's true. That's where I'm aiming. I'm aiming over your head. 
because it's going to do you no good for you to hear about mind, but it's going to do a lot of good possible if mind hears about a you. <laughs> when mind gets a clue that it's not you. <laughs> so this is sort of like spiritual, like spiritual sperm, yeah? So we are releasing, so we're throwing stuff because the mental state's very fast. It's going to claim things very quickly. I mean, unbelievable. When you hear the message, it's going to be a feeling of you heard the message. When you think you had an awakening, the you will claim it and you'll think you had an awakening. You know, the you is going to always glom on, try to attempt to own something. And as soon as it claims something, it neuters it. Yeah. So it doesn't surrender its system and enter that. It morphs that to fit into its system. That's what it does. Yeah. You see the movement? Yeah. So this thing is, is so quick. So it has myths like, you know, it's, you know that move, that Death Star in Star Wars? Yeah, like they blow in all the fucking little fighter planes in. But one gets through. One sperm gets through and, get, and it hits the egg, the contextual egg, and this conception of an idea. And the idea is I'm not that. And then suddenly, like a twin is born, comes right out after it. I can be free from it. That's the message. It's possible, but not to you, but it's possible. Yeah? The point is to keep overwhelming the system, keep throwing balls over the head, because it's like that picture of a thousand arm Indra or something. This would have <laughs> mitts just catching fucking. I'm not that, you know, catching, but one, all that needs is one to get through. If one gets through and that conception occurs, the gig's over, basically. The gig will continue. It's weird. It's like that famous statement, uh, first there is the mountain, then there is no mountain, then there is a mountain. Well, here it's even, actually, the, you could add on to that. First there is no mountain, and then there is a mountain, and then there is no mountain, and then there's a mountain again. So... First, there is no self, then there seems to be a self, and then the self seems disappears, and then there's a sense of self again. The, self, the sense of self keeps getting produced, but now it's not seen to be you. That's the whole difference. If you're trying to change this thing's patterning or programming, it's pointless. Just see it's not about you. Yeah. So now instead of listening to it intently, you'll be hearing it because you're consciousness. Yeah? You're going to hear it, but that doesn't mean you need to listen to it. And now you'll be directed or led. Let's say in the course that we'd be talking about, you're going to be led by something here. I mean, something's leading us as action figures. So let's say you're being led by the system, the self-centered system. Yeah? And then... You surrender, let's say, to the Holy Spirit or what, or the higher power in AA, and then you're led by that. The systems are totally different. One has self as the center, the other system doesn't. You travel a lot, lot later. Yes? You get to be used. And while you're being used, while you, you, there's a realization of presence, and then that presence is obviously based on that you'll be available, and when you're available, you're of service be put to use yeah and this is to me that's one of the highest levels of a mental state surrender gratitude being useful being used yeah yeah, yeah. so I don't know that's it I think yeah you're gonna get nothing anyway so I gave you like an hour of nothing. You can come back and get more nothing tomorrow. When you total all the more nothings, it's the same amount. Nothing. Yeah, you came in here with it. You're going to leave. Nothing's actually radically changed. That's the beautiful thing. There's some base that we all are in that's going unnoticed that doesn't change based on anything. Yeah, always available at all times. You can rest there. <laughs>